Hi guys, welcome back and today I'm coming to you from my studio cabin on board Norwegian Escape. Now, I'm on here for a seven night cruise that left New York City yesterday. We'll spend the next couple of nights going up through New England into Canada before returning back into New York City in a week's time. So I've got a lot to show you. Now this morning I've woken up in Newport, Rhode Island, which if you followed me in my last vlog series, you'll probably remember that I actually did dock here on my last ship. But due to a number of reasons, which I won't go into, I'll let you head over and watch that video. But I got literally no time ashore last week. It was really, really disappointing. But today, I've got very high hopes. The tender process seems to be going to plan so far. And I'm hoping that it's going to be really, really easy. Now, plan for today. Because while I didn't get too much time to explore last week, I did learn that this port looks, albeit within 25 minutes, absolutely beautiful and I've got a really clear idea today of exactly what I want to get up to. So two things that we're going to look at today. Number one is the cliff walk. So Newport has got a really famous three and a half mile cliff walk. We won't be doing all three and a half miles but we'll do a bit of it and then secondly we're going to check out the Newport mansions. So yeah the mansions seem fascinating so basically I'll tell you more as we get there but basically just before the 20th century New York money moved north and built what they term summer cottages in Newport. Now, from what I've seen online, these cottages don't look like what I would imagine a cottage to look like. They're a little bit bigger than what a British person would call a cottage. So yeah, bear with me and I'll take you off and show you all of that. Now, weather-wise today, I was a little bit unsure weather for this cruise route. Now, I'm cruising for the majority of this year and one of my big tips is that you need to be really clear on what the weather conditions are going to be for your cruise because just three weeks ago I was in the Caribbean, it was approaching triple figures every single day, but today, slightly different. So on the daily schedule, which on here is called the Freestyle Daily, it says on here that the current temperature outside is expected to be 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So a far cry from Aruba three weeks ago. So I am going to be wearing, I've got like chino jeans on, I'm going to wear my, believe it or not, I'm going to wear my ski jacket today <laughs> and also a hoodie because I am feeling the cold this week. <laughs> and yeah. Now, only other thing to mention is tender times. Now, tendering here began at seven o'clock this morning and they were pretty prompt with that. They came through the tannoy system, not into the cabins, but just into the corridors to tell everyone they'd started. And the final tender today leaves the pier at 3 p.m. So as long as you're back for 3 p.m., they'll guarantee that they'll get you back onto the ship. Now, time now, it's just gone 10 a.m., so we should have plenty of time to get off and explore today. And on that note, I think it's time to go. So look, let's get out of this cabin, let's get ashore, and hopefully, tender line permitting, explore what should be a beautiful day in Newport, Rhode Island. It's time to head downstairs and go ashore. If you've watched my last episode from on board this cruise, you might remember that I showed you this beautiful chandelier down in one of the main atrium sections on board the ship. I wanted to show you that again today because I just absolutely love it. Every single time you come down here, the chandelier's a different color, the stairs are a different color. It's awesome. After that, I came out onto the promenade deck and that's when I realised we were joined in port today by the same Saga ship that we were with in New York yesterday. I've never cruised with Saga, but let me know in the comments if you have. Back to tendering. The way the tendering operation was working today was that everybody would gather in the theatre and you would be seated by the crew in a specific row number. That row number would then coincide with a tender boat number and when your number was called, you would stand up, head to the front of the theatre and then head down this access corridor. This is the corridor that you would walk up if you were walking in to watch a show at night. And I was so surprised to find that at the end of that corridor was the outside world. They had just opened a door on the ship and there was the tender boat waiting to take us ashore. Now if you're watching this video and you've never cruised before or you've never been on a cruise where you've had to experience a tender situation, let me reassure you that it is absolutely fine. And in fact, I usually really quite enjoy a tender journey because look at that view of your cruise ship. You're not going to get that 
in many other ports. Norwegian Escape has this awesome hull art painted by Guy Harvey up the front, which hopefully you saw in that last clip. I just think she is a beautiful ship. Anyway, enough about the ship because we are now ashore. Autumn colours abound here in Newport, Rhode Island. I was absolutely delighted to be here and I was delighted to have so many more hours to explore than I did last week. One final point is that when you get to the Welcome to Newport sign, look at all of those sister cities. I do wonder if I'm going to love it here as much as I love St John, New Brunswick, but there's only one way to find out. That's us now off the ship and you know what, annoyingly I'm going to have to say the process for getting off that ship wasn't actually any better or any smoother than getting off Meraviglia last week. The only thing that worked in, in, in Norwegian's favour today was that it was a little bit quieter but to be honest it was still chaos so we had to queue at one end of the ship, we then had to move to the other end of the ship and wait in the theatre. You go in the theatre, there's hundreds of people waiting and then they filter through, prioritising everyone that's on excursions. So, yeah, not the best experience getting off there, but hey, it looked as though embarkation was going really smoothly. So hopefully there's not going to be a massive line by the time we go back to the ship. Anyway, I'm going to have to get a shimmy on because that, that took a fair bit of time. So it's now just gone 12, which means that yeah, that process must have taken about an hour to an hour and a half to leave the ship today. And it does make me think, I wonder if the days of these sort of supports could be numbered. Because if you tender in the Caribbean, it's so easy to get ashore. Whereas there's so many different rules and regulations coming somewhere like this that just means that tendering takes so much longer. And I do think, I mean, that's two cruise lines one week after the other. This one has been doing it. I mean, these guys were here with me last week, so it's not their first time here and it didn't go smoothly at all. And there's no way that passengers are leaving a cruise experience like this totally satisfied with the wait times on that ship, especially not if you've got a family. So I do wonder, yeah, are the days of docking or tendering to somewhere like this relatively numbered? Who knows? Anyway, speaking of the time, let's get a shimmy on because otherwise we're gonna miss the cliff walk. So we'll head around this road and I'll see you over there. Walking through Newport, Rhode Island, two things were pretty clear to me. First, this place is nice. And I mean really nice. I thought this port was absolutely stunning. Everywhere you looked, it was just taken such good care of, whether it be the beautiful architecture that I'll show you later in this video, or whether it be the fact that there's just no litter. It didn't feel like there was any visible crime. Oh. I just absolutely loved it here. The second thing that was pretty clear to me was that the cruise ship tourists must have got off the ships and went in buses to the attractions. Look at how quiet the streets were. It was absolutely amazing. I've never seen it quite so quiet when you go for a walk. Now, you will see, we'll pick the crowds back up when we get to the cliff walk area, but if you're planning to come here on a cruise, Take it from me, walk from the cruise ship up to, for example, the cliff walk and the mansions because you totally enter the real world here. It was great. Now this little coffee shop, I just happened to stumble upon it and the main thing that attracted me to go in here was this board. Look at all of these different fall or autumn coffees. I honestly felt as though I had died and gone to heaven. Yes, looking at the cup, they can't spell Fraser, but to be fair, it's quite a difficult name to get right. And it's probably one of the better guesses that I've had since landing here in the US. Anyway, after my brilliant coffee was well and truly devoured, I then headed up to the cliff walk, which from that coffee shop was only about a 10 minute walk. You can see the entrance to the walk here, but we're not going to go in quite yet because just beyond this entrance is a beach and just to the left of that beach is what looks like a gorgeous lake surrounded by some amazing lakefront properties. So I'm going to go in there for a look and that's exactly where I'll pick up with you.
Okay, so we're basically now at the start of the cliff walk and I've taken a little bit of a detour. So behind me at the moment, you can see, hopefully, those cars going across. Now, that's where the cliff walk begins and the logic essentially is we should go from there probably for about a mile. That cliff walk will then take us along the front and along the back of some of those amazing houses that have been built here. And then we should end up down by the mansions. But I've come a little detour along here because this place is absolutely beautiful. Do you know those places that you visit and you feel like you're the only one there? Which I always feel really strange when that happens when I'm visiting on such a huge cruise ship. But this is basically when you get to the cliff walk, instead of going right onto the walk, you just go left and it turns pretty, well, pretty residential, very residential, very, very quickly. And oh, honestly, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I know in my last series, I stumbled upon this Scarecrow Festival, right? And the advert for the Scarecrow Festival said, why don't you grab your favorite fall sweater, grab a fall coffee and explore. And that is now the logic that I'm now living my life by for these cruises because uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've just fallen in love with the American concept of fall, or as we would say, autumn. And walking up there, I found the cutest little coffee shop. So I thought, I'll go in and see what there is. And they had a whole board for just fall or autumn coffees. So I'm here with my pumpkin pie infused latte, wandering around some of the most beautiful lakeside homes that I've ever seen. So, oh. Uh, it's a shame I don't have multiple days here, to be honest. But yeah, look, let's have another walk. I'm just gonna keep walking around here and then we'll take the cliff walk down to the mansions. But first impressions of Newport, having spent, what, an hour and a half here? Oh, this place is an absolute treat. It's now time for us to leave those amazing homes behind and head up to the cliff walk where believe me the homes are about to get way more impressive. We are starting our walk today at point number one which is Easton's Beach and we are going to take the green path all the way along to point number seven, the breakers. You could then take this path for the remaining journey but when it goes amber and red it's a lot more challenging. We're on a time scale because we've got a ship to get back to so for a number of reasons, we'll stick to the green. Now the footpath that you can see here, this is the cliff walk, and this essentially runs along the back of all of those huge big mega mansions that I'm going to show you a little bit more of shortly. What I did want to show you here was this, line of steps heading down to the ocean. This is affectionately known as 40 steps, and the origin of this is really fascinating. One of the super rich families from New York that came up here to play at their mansion house built originally a wooden set of steps to give their children direct access to the ocean. After the children moved up, the owners of the home dedicated the wooden steps to the community and they were able to then use it at their leisure. Now over the years, the various, shall we say, hired employees or servants from the other mansions would then come to the wooden steps to hang out. Can you imagine what it would be like when all the servants were down here? Absolutely amazing. Now back in the 1990s, so relatively recently, loads of people clubbed together to rebuild those steps in the form that you see now. And that's what all those names are as you go up to the top. Anyway, it's now time to look at our first mansion of the day. Look at this entrance. Let's go inside. Ladies and gentlemen, The Breakers. The Breakers is the grandest of Newport's summer cottages and it was originally built for one of the richest families on the planet, the Vanderbilts. The Breakers was everything that a millionaire back in the Gilded Age could possibly want in a summer getaway home. 
a design influenced by Italian palaces, some of the finest craftsmanship in the world, views looking directly out over the ocean, and the whole house was full of modern technology to make everything even more comfortable. The home was built between 1893 and 1895, after which point the family would move in. I don't know about you, but I think this is absolutely amazing. Okay guys, as I say, this is the Breakers and this is pretty widely known as the most famous of the mansions here in Newport. I think you'll agree, it's pretty remarkable. Anyway, time-wise, it's just gone 2pm, which means All Aboard is in one hour. So that means it's time for us to head back down to the ship and hopefully get to check out some of the little shopping streets on the way. But yeah, I'm actually quite gutted that I haven't made it into here because even just looking on the outside, I reckon it's absolutely stunning in there. But hey, any excuse, <laughs> any excuse to pick another cruise. So look, let's leave here, head down to the ship, and I'll see you all properly when we get back on board and into the cabin. On my way back to the ship, I stumbled upon Bannister's Wharf. This place was the old commercial seaport here in Newport, and nowadays it's the home to boutique hotels, shops, cafes, restaurants, and a little marina. It's a really beautiful spot to just come and spend a bit of time wandering around. Anyway, do you know who's not wandering around? Everybody stuck in the queue to get back on board Norwegian Escape. Let me take you up the line Look at how long this is, and remember, all of these people have to get onto a small tender boat. I know, I'm going to be here for quite some time. Okay, guys, do you remember earlier when I said it looked as though embarkation was going perfectly here? <laughs> well, obviously that's meant that it's now gone completely to pot, so I am now back at the, like, the boarding area to go back onto the ship. And honestly, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen queues like this. These are longer than what MSC had last week, and there is not a chance I am standing waiting in them. So, yeah, it's quarter to three right now and all aboard or the last tender here apparently leaves at three o'clock but <laughs> that is not no way going to be the case because that line i walked up it really quickly just to show you the length of it but that is going to take an absolute age so instead of waiting in that i'm going to go over to the main street grab a coffee and just come back when the line has gone down because there is no point in joining the back of that right now because i reckon i reckon that's probably going to take upwards of an hour judging by how many people are in there so look we played this game last week in boston i think it was so let's see how long do you think it was going to take me to get on the ship it's currently quarter to three the final tender leaves at 3 p.m apparently but <laughs> let me know how accurate you are and i'll tell you what time it is as soon as we get onto the ship <laughs> and into the cabin okay what time did you think I'd get back on this ship? Because if you said 4.30pm, you'd be right. So, yeah, I don't know what's happening with re-embarkation in Newport, but I spoke to some people who work there, just at the dock, and they were saying they've never seen it as bad as what it was today. That took so long. Like, to give Norwegian their dues, they had water. They were also giving out hot chocolate, which, to be honest, was a nice touch, but you had to be kind of within the next 100 people to get that. 
honestly, whatever went wrong today, uh, Norwegian, if you're listening to this, please do better, because that was a bit of a nightmare. Um, now, what I did, which to be honest, I would advise anyone in that position to do this, rather than stand in the line for what would have been way over an hour, do what I did, go and look at the bench opposite the start of uh, the end of the line and just go and sit in the sun for an hour. So I've actually had quite a nice afternoon, to be perfectly honest with you, just chilling out in the sun. But a lot of people getting on this ship are ratty and they are, yeah, annoyed. Anyway, look, it's not half four right now. It's a little bit later than that. It's just going up to, what time is it? Seven o'clock, actually. So quite a lot has happened since I last spoke to you guys. So when I got back on, I went via the Irish pub on board to get a bite to eat as like a kind of late lunch, early dinner type snack. So what I went for there was a Caesar salad to kick off, followed by nachos, which to be honest, should have been the other way around, but they were just served as a salad followed by nachos. I then went to the Solo Traveller catch up, which took place in the studio lounge. So that's one of my favourite things about travelling solo in Norwegian. You get such a great mix of people in there. And then I did a TikTok live up on the top deck of the ship. So I should plug now, if you're not already followed along on TikTok, why not? So head over to Fraser at Sea on TikTok and find me over there. But look, just before we wrap up and talk about the plan for tonight, I just wanted to close off on today. Now, hopefully it's come through in those videos that I have had a great day today. I've really, really enjoyed that. And Newport's just so beautiful. I, I mean, I say I've not been there before. I visited for 20 minutes last time. So as someone who hasn't really been there before, the first impressions of that place are absolutely excellent. Now, what I would say, and I wouldn't say this about many places in the world that I've been to, but I'm not convinced that visiting by cruise ship is the way that I would recommend doing somewhere like Newport because the restaurant seems such good quality, the bars look excellent, the hotels are beautiful, the overall town there, it's just such high quality, there's so much to do, that I think visiting by ship, I mean, I've not seen really any of it, to be honest with you, and I feel like, yeah, I'd see so much more, and I'd see it in a much better light if I was to spend the night, so yeah, feel a bit weird saying that because obviously I'm the world's biggest cruise advocate but I'm not convinced that a cruise ship is the way to visit Newport. I definitely want to go back and the way I think I'd maybe do it in the future is if I had a couple of nights in New York at some point then maybe try and club that on and do it as a bit of a double double whammy. Is that is that a Scottish word? I'm not sure but a double whammy where you try and do New York and Newport as part of the same trip. Because, yeah, a couple more hours there definitely would have been better. But an overnight or a couple of nights would be amazing. I reckon it's a, probably a pretty expensive place to spend a few nights, though. But, but hey, that's my sixpence. But I've had a, oh, honestly, fantastic day today. Now, anyway, plan for tonight. So back to ye old daily schedule. And my plan tonight is really simple. So... I'm going to have a buffet dinner tonight because I've just had that stuff down at the Irish pub and yeah, if I don't eat again, then I'll be starving going to bed. But if I go to the dining room, I think I'll just be too full and I don't need another full meal. So I'm just going to go to the buffet, get some stuff to pick at and that should do me. After that, I'm going to go down to Dueling Pianos, which is usually really good fun. I don't know if I'll be able to video anything in there to show you, but I will try. And then after that, oh, after that, I'm so excited. I've got Choir of Man booked tonight, which is the big show that they've got on Norwegian Escape. Now, I've heard nothing but good things about this show. So I'm hoping with every part of my body, it's not going to be a letdown. Like, I love a musical. I love a show. So hopefully it should deliver. But look, I'll take you out and about around the ship with me. And... I think that's it for now. So whenever you're watching from, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting my channel. And thank you for following along. I really do love bringing you on this journey and showing you everything that I'm getting up to. So I hope you've enjoyed today seeing a little bit more of Newport than what I got to show you last week. So yeah, tomorrow we dock in Portland, Maine, which is another port I went to before, but I only got off the ship 
at 4.30 p.m. last week. So <laughs> we've got a whole new port to explore tomorrow as well. So hopefully you're going to tune in and join me for what should be another little mini adventure. But look, wherever you've joined me from today, thank you very much. And let's go and explore the ship. Welcome to the Julian Piano venue on board Norwegian Escape. In here, every night of your cruise, you'll find dueling pianos. You'll also sometimes get comedy in here. I did think it was a really nice venue, even if dueling pianos is, I enjoy it, but it's not really up my street. Let's move on and talk about something that is though. Let's talk about the show tonight along in the main theater. Tonight was Choir of Man, and that is a musical set in a British pub. What better way to set that scene than to welcome the audience up on stage before the show for a free beer. I absolutely loved that idea. Anyway, the show here is all about what goes on in a pub and all the relationships that develop among all the clientele as they get to know each other better. It is such a feel-good, upbeat musical. If it happens to be on your cruise in the future, please, please, please go and book it. I'll let you hear a sample at the end of this video so that you can get a little flavour for this show, but it was excellent. Anyway, that is it from here on board Norwegian Escape. In my next video, I'm showing you a whole new port. So make sure if you're not already, you click that subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. If you enjoyed this video today, did you know that you can become a member of my YouTube channel for an exclusive behind the scenes look at some of the ships that I'm traveling on? If you're over on Patreon, then I would love to see you over there. All you have to do to join me on that community is just search www.patreon.com forward slash Fraser at sea. Both my YouTube memberships and my Patreon site lead directly to me getting on more cruise ships, and both offer a completely behind the scenes look at what's going on.